What do you imagine when you think of planting seeds? I see myself digging a hole in the ground and sprinkling some physical seeds into it. And I also kind of imagine those seeds growing, too. But seeds aren't just literal. They can be metaphorical, too, like ideas and imagination. That's what we're talking about today, specifically planting ideological seeds in medical technology. And with it, we bring a discussion of ethics. My name is Shravya Sethi. I'm Dia Badani. And, and this, this is our TED Talk. Well, why is that there? I, I was hungry when I was making the slides, and oh, how I wanted a packet of Doritos. No, you shouldn't eat those. Doritos have GMOs in them, so they're bad for you. Wait, yeah, they have GMOs, but where'd you get the idea that GMOs are bad for you? I mean, everyone says they are, and I guess if you modify something's DNA, it's bad for the environment or poisonous or something like that. And this isn't something we have much experience with, so we don't really know what issues are to come. Actually, GMOs are totally safe. We've been using them, sometimes unknowingly, for centuries now. Take carrots as an example. They weren't always orange and meaty. GMOs have been giving us the things that we consider healthy today. So you're saying plants have these diseases and GMOs help sideline them? Can't we just apply the same thing to humans? Actually, yes, we can apply the concept of genetic modification to humans. Zoom into another kind of seed, a metaphorical one, planted not too long ago, in 2011. A seed called CRISPR, which has grown significantly in just the past 10 years. Now, you would imagine... What is CRISPR? CRISPR, as I was saying, stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. And it's a gene editing technique, kind of like the genetic modification that we talked about earlier, invented by Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna. Not even going to question the name, but how on earth would something like that work? Well, Charpentier and Doudna discovered the tool while studying bacteria, and how it snips away parts of a virus, memorizes it, and uses it to cut away the virus with enzymes. Wait, okay. what? Essentially, CRISPR is a pair of genetic scissors used to cut away problematic genes. But you said this CRISPR thing, Bob, had something to do with humans. Right. So these scissors can be developed and used to remove and replace genes that cause humans some serious problems. CRISPR can cure some huge medical conditions. Well, if this tech is so great, how come we're not using it? We could be saving so many lives. Well, it has been used successfully at that. In 2020, Victoria Gray, who suffered from sickle cell disease, was pumped with her own CRISPR-edited bone marrow cells, and she was cured. Sickle cell disease is present in approximately 100,000 Americans and is a condition where the patient's red blood cells die too early. That can block your blood flow. Treatments include bone marrow transplants, which are rare, expensive, and risky. So it's wonderful that we have CRISPR to treat something like this. Well, in this case, they were editing an adult's bone marrow cells. But what if you edit something else, like stem cells or embryos? If CRISPR has been around for years, I'm sure someone's tried that. Well, the type of editing that you're talking about is hereditary gene editing. And it has been used. Chinese scientist He Zhongkui used it to cure the future diseases of two twins while they were still in a petri dish. Really? Whoa, that's kind of messed up. Those unborn babies didn't even get a choice in being messed with. Well... No, don't say anything. I smell a consent issue. Even I ask people if their souls are for sale before buying them. So if you're going to edit entire family's genes, you should probably get their consent first. I mean, the parents do get a say in what happens to their child, and they must have their baby's best interest in mind. How do you know that? The parents say still isn't the child say, though. Anyway, we have to think about society as a whole. Hereditary genome editing is hereditary. It affects the possible future generations of that altered person. The whole world needs to make this important ethical decision, not just some embryo's parents. Well, the whole world should also consider that CRISPR saves lives. Remember that with hereditary genome editing, there are possible side effects that we just can't predict. Does initially saving lives matter so much if they can be harmed in the future? So you don't care about saving lives? I do. So then CRISPR saves lives and everybody's happy. Not everybody. You keep conveniently ignoring the side effects I'm trying to bring up. It's perfectly reasonable to say that they could be fatal. Who knows? This is genetic code we're talking about. So many different things could happen because of a lack of regulation. 
Well, so many positive things can happen too. CRISPRs and medical technology can cure people. And it's pretty simple to use, so it's accessible too. Accessibility? That is in no way a positive of CRISPR. Think about it. If we make something like CRISPR more widespread, that makes more genes falter. And we could discover cons that we just didn't know about before. Well, discovering these cons just helps us develop CRISPR further. That's a good thing. Well, there are other issues too. Think about designer babies. CRISPR makes stuff like that more possible. But get this, only for the rich. That makes the income inequality gap that already exists even wider than it is right now. And what if it could be used for something way worse? Like, as a bioweapon? If someone has the power to edit genes this precisely, they could wipe out an entire gender or a race. In the hands of an ill-intending person, CRISPR could bring about a genocide. In the end, it just makes things worse. Stop. Okay, stop. Look, there are so many things that CRISPR can change about our world. Think about organ transplants, which doesn't even involve editing human genes. CRISPR makes that so much more accessible by altering the genes of an animal. You can use its organs to transplant into a human. That is a phenomenal breakthrough in itself. But remember Victoria Gray, the first CRISPR patient? She's living free of her disease in Mississippi right now. Even past sickle cell disease, there's so many different conditions that CRISPR can treat. Blindness, AIDS, cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, diabetes, COVID-19, even cancer. Things we haven't been able to cure for years. That is what CRISPR can do. Save thousands of lives. How? I don't really know how to top that. Look, I get it. CRISPR is like a tree. It's been planted and growing and branching out. Yeah, one branch can lead to something confusing, maybe even disastrous, but another can be something so precious that we can't really let it go. Yeah, and I guess there is always a fear that as a people you might climb up the wrong branch, but I suppose we don't get a choice at all, unless we have the courage to plant that seed. Right, time to go plant some poison ivy.